Hey there techies, welcome to another video today. We're going to be taking a look at Kaspersky Rescue Disk 10. Now the reason we're taking a look at a rescue disk instead of a regular anti-malware application, or like the prevention kind in a sense, is because I've been having some issues gaining access to my malware packs uh, from my malware vendor. Now I've been trying to contact them, but they've never been the speediest in the past when this has happened. Uh, so I've been also looking for a new vendor possibly so I've been sending some emails off and trying to find some new reliable sources for malware packs because I thought to myself you know I could do just the links and the removal test but that really wouldn't give the hard numbers in the actual detection rate of the program itself so I really want to keep it the same way it is right now that's the bottom line with that um, so with that said, we're going to be doing some rescue disks and other removal tools because I have this lovely interface of malware right in front of me. And we'll go ahead and put it to use instead of just letting it sit here on the system and age and do nothing. So we're going to test some removal tools and rescue disks with it at least until I can get access to some malware packs that are reliable and we can then go ahead and continue the prevention test reviews. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and start this review. And to get off, to start, basically we're gonna reset the system. Now, normally you'd want to restart it normally if possible, uh, just because if you were to do this um, and mount the disks, there's a possibility that with the intermittent data loss and stuff that um, partial removal, and there's just a whole bunch of different things that can go wrong. Uh, in a sense, you'll lose data with um, doing it that way. But it's just a test here, so let's see. If, oh, I always miss it. I always can never get to the boot menu in time. Uh, I always, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not fast enough, I guess. Let's try this again. There we go. Okay, so I've already mounted the ISO file on the system here, so we're going to go ahead and boot from it. And as you can see, we have a prompt right here, just got to press the key to enter, and then you can select your language here. So you got a couple languages to choose from, we're going to do English. You can go ahead and read through your license report, I just did, great. And then now you have your options, so this is kind of like your boot menu here. Uh, and it's going to go ahead and say, do you want to do a graphic mode, text mode? Uh, you can get hardware information, boot right to the hard drive. Don't know why you would want to do that. Or you can reboot and shut down. So in this case, we're going to do the graphic mode. That's the one I would suggest for most people. Uh, realistically, there's not much in the way anyone's going to need to go in the text mode. Uh, unless you're going to want to do some advanced system uh, configuration or something like that. So. We're going to just stay with the graphic mode here, keep it easy, keep it simple, and also keep it uh, easy on the eyes for you guys too. Seeing this is YouTube and people love flashy colors and um, lights and things like that. So it doesn't take too long to boot up here as you can see. Uh, it is on a hard disk drive, not a CD drive. You can burn this to or uh, put this on a USB drive if you would want. but. Um, you do have to download the little utility from Kaspersky to do that. So it's a small little, uti small little utility uh, that they've made. So that's nice that you can do that. Now here's the uh, prompt I was talking about here. So there's possible corruption that could occur if you were to do it this way like I did where you just kind of hard reset the system and boot into it. But um, it's a virtual machine. We're not looking to do anything like that. That's there's no data in here I care about, is what I'm trying to say. So we're going to go ahead and continue, let it mount the disks here, and then we'll go ahead and kind of go through some things here. So it'll just take a second. Okay, so it looks as if it's mounted the disks. Yep, there they are. There's our main C drive and then our Windows 7 um, boot files right there. Okay, so as you can see, it booted right into the main interface and it looks just like you know, you'd know expect from Kaspersky, you know, one of their older 2010 style interfaces. Up top here, you have your two tabs, uh, your object scans. So this is where you can select the C drive, boot sectors, hidden objects, um, and then also any other partitions that may even be hidden. As you can see right here, the Windows 7 boot files. So we'll go ahead and select all those because we're gonna wanna scan the whole system here. But before you scan, uh, make sure that you update the system. Uh, as you can see here, the signatures are from uh, yesterday actually. So wow, that's pretty amazing. They shipped this thing with up-to-date signatures. So if we were to start it right now, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but we all we want to make sure you get the latest signatures, so we're going to go ahead and just start an update 
and do that. So while that's doing that, let's go through some of the settings here. As you can see, this is the main configuration interface and you can adjust the security levels here to be more aggressive or less aggressive. If you go to settings, uh, you can also adjust different security settings in here, whether it scans um, uh, OEL or OEL. OLE files or objects, um, that's kind of what Microsoft Office uses in its macros and things like that. So if you have a macro virus on your system, uh, this will definitely detect it uh, if there's a signature for it and remove it. So additional settings here, you can adjust the heuristic scan settings. So how aggressive will the heuristics be? Obviously more aggressive is gonna get you more detection rate, but less aggressive or more, more aggressive, well, it gets you more detection rate, will also get you more false positives. There we go, I'll get it out eventually. So there we go with that. Uh, let's move on here. Obviously you'd have different actions right down here that you can present or Kaspersky can present to you upon a interaction with an infected object. Update settings, there's really nothing you'll need to change in here ever unless you have a specific server you want them to grab the updates from. Threats right here, you can adjust which threats it should find. So adware is good, auto dialers is good, uh, multi-packed objects, that's nice to see. So if there's a object in your system that is going to infect it further, uh, kind of with packed objects later on in the installation, grab from here, there, the other, you know, uh, that'll, it'll detect that, so that's nice to see. Um, okay, I guess we're doing that. Anyways, notifications right here. As you can see, not much in the way of settings here. Don't really need to adjust anything there. And then reports and storage. Yeah, it is what it is. It's good. Don't need to adjust that either. So now, as you can see, um, should have probably mentioned this first, but this is a Linux based environment that we're in. Um, if we go down here, we can adjust the screen resolution. So we'll adjust it to this just to make it a little bit easier on the eyes. There we go. That's much nicer, right? Much more area to work now. So if we look on the left here, we have the main application. This is what you use to open this up if you were to close this. Uh, file manager right here, kind of like Windows. You can just go ahead and go in your C drive and take a look and see if your documents are still there. If there's anything worth saving on your system. And this is obviously in the case you can't boot it. There's a registry editor it comes with too. You can open up a web browser. That's also right down here. Uh, network setup. So if you have to use this over Wi-Fi, I believe it is, does have Wi-Fi support. Uh, however, you will have to put your credentials in because it will not know your credentials for your Wi-Fi. So my suggestion is do it just over a LAN connection. Take an Ethernet, take an Ethernet cable, plug it in your router, plug the other end into your device, and call it good. So. Uh, you can look at about it, screenshots, you can show all your friends, all the cool Mallory you just removed with Kaspersky Rescue Disk, right? So, you can see there you go, you got that. Pretty simple. Not designed to be a elegant interface in a sense of anything productive happening in here. It's strictly designed to be a removal tool. So with that said, let's use it as is and let's start the scan. So all you gotta do is check the boxes, we're gonna check everything, scan the whole dang system, and then we're now gonna click Start Objects Scan. Now this could take a while guys, so you might want to go ahead, make some popcorn, watch one of your favorite TV shows while this is doing this thing, and it's obviously all dependent on the speed of your computer and how much malware is on there. And you can already see, it's detected malware. So this is already going off great. So I'm going to go ahead, let this scan. When it's done, I'll be back, we'll take a look at the results. Uh, might do another scan, might do a scan again, we'll see, I'll think about it, we'll see how much it detects and then we'll boot back into Windows and check out how it's wor working and you know everything and functionality, is it all back to normal or how close to normal is it back in the way of functionality. So, see you in a bit guys. All right techies, welcome back. So the scan is not quite finished, but I'm pretty sure it'll finish after we answer these prompts right here. So let's take a look, what do we have? Object doesn't really say what it is. We're gonna go ahead and delete it. All right, everyone, so the scan has completed and it's, well, a couple days later, but nevertheless, the scan has finished. Uh, it did take quite a long time, uh, especially once it got to 99%. I want to warn you guys, well, it may seem that it's hung up when it gets to about 99% because hard drive activity goes down significantly. It is still functioning. Uh, you just gotta be patient and let it finish what it's doing. 
when it is finished, you will see it basically go back to this state right here, and this will go back to green from red as it was detecting objects earlier. So we can go ahead and now exit this. Uh, if you click quarantine here, uh, you can see the quarantine items as they're listed right here. Uh, you can also see the report. So it says it found a total of 1,136 malicious objects. Now that doesn't mean that there's a thousand different pieces of malware on the system. It just means that there were over a thousand infected objects on the system. So uh, it probably is detecting a lot of the same infections on the system. But um, nevertheless, we're going to go ahead and reboot the system. So we can go ahead and close this out. And then I believe you can go down here and you can click on restart. And it's going to ask you if you really want to restart the system. You just click yes. And the system should restart normally. Hey there techies, welcome back. So we've booted up the system and did a scan with Hitman Pro. Now Kaspersky didn't do as well as I'd hoped it would, but it has really put a significant dent in this system. Uh, as you can see there is malware left in the system and while this does seem like a lot of malware, uh, in comparison to how this system was before, it is definitely, definitely a huge improvement. Uh, in addition to that, as you can see, this is a lot of the same infection right here uh, that is on the system. So, it, like I said earlier, while it did find a thousand objects, each one of these is considered an object. So while this is all the same infection, this is one piece of malware, it has infected multiple objects here. So, as you can see, once again, the same object. Why didn't Kaspersky remove that if it's detected by Kaspersky? I told it to remove everything. Anyways, I didn't say ignore anything, so it should have it should have detected that and removed it, considering that it has a signature for it. Interesting. But once again, you can see a lot of this is, um, and we got some Trojans down there. So not not too bad. Um, however, there is still a significant chunk of malware left in the system so I can't say that it did as well as I'd hoped it would on this system but for as, as infected as it was it definitely put a dent in it so I will continue to use this in my arsenal with a bunch of other tools that I have and when it comes to cleaning up systems if we look at what's running in the back or background here the system is relatively clean well, at least um, I should have pulled this up earlier for you guys so you could see what was running in the background but we only have uh, one down here that I accidentally launched um, on the desktop here. But for the most part, um, that's just adware. And I unfortunately can't click on it um, to pull up the virus total information on the actual process. However, uh, we do have what looks to be a little bit malicious object right here. So that could be um, that just does not that's not normal I can guarantee you that's not part of uh, of any Microsoft process so with that said how did Kaspersky rescue disk do at cleaning up this system let's say it did okay I'm not gonna say it did a fantastic job because it didn't really do a fantastic fantastic job but for as infected as the system was it really did put a dent in the system and made it a lot more usable than it was. Keep in mind, it's called a rescue disk for a reason. It's designed to get you back into the Windows environment. Now, while we could always get into the Windows environment, it did significantly improve the experience within this environment and making it easier for me to now run tools such as Hitman Pro to clean up the remainder of this malware or at least get it to the point where I can recover whatever is left on the system, which is absolutely nothing. Everything has basically been um, encrypted, except for this apparently. Oh, never mind. <laughs> just the um, just the thumbnail is, is working here. I wonder, it's probably not gonna work. Yeah, never mind. Anyways, so yeah, bottom line, it, it did an okay job. You know, and I'm, I'm almost borderline to say it did good. But uh, it definitely, definitely could use some room for improvement. Now, if I do a second scan, who knows? It may detect those remainder, um, 
the remainder pieces of malware and go ahead and remove them. But I'm not going to go that in depth. I think we got a pretty good uh, result on the preliminary analysis of the system. So I'm going to go ahead and the review here. I would have to say Kaspersky did a, good, did a decent job and I would consider using it. Uh, and I do use it. So despite uh, my previous thoughts on Kaspersky itself. But I'm going to put that aside. So that's it. Uh, I'll be doing some more of these rescue disc reviews in the near future. So keep an eye on the channel. There'll be new videos to come out on certain removal tools, seeing I'm still working on getting more malware. So see you in the next video, guys.